Hello, I'm calling from the trip. I'd like to confirm a call. Getting your way around in two hours. I'll be talking about deadline. How much money was involved? Was it over $1,000? Was it over $10,000? Temperatures soaring to a high of 95 degrees with only 5% humidity and strong winds below the canyons. Fire officials warn of extreme fire danger, especially during the Santa Ana conditions, which are expected to last through the weekend. Campers and backpackers are urged to be extremely cautious during these dry days. I hope my taking a shower didn't awaken you. It was just so darn hot. It's okay. I wasn't asleep. so dumb. Those guys always show up the day before the winds come up. Boy, it's hot for December. Well, you'll be getting out of here for a couple of days. San Francisco in December, the weather acts like it's December. When I spoke to Mr. Harcourt yesterday, he said it was 65 and foggy. He's 65 and foggy. Why do you have to do that? Mrs. Cordell from the real estate office is coming by with some salespeople. I want the house to look good. I'm going to water a little before I go to work, too. Oh. I'll get it. It's probably the office. Mr. Hill, this is the Los Angeles Tribune. We just wanted to know what the temperature is in West L.A. this morning. Hotter in hell and going up. Thank you. We'll put that in our paper. Listen, I just want you to know that our meeting with Schreiber has moved up an hour. I'm on my way in. Did you ever see it clearer than it was this morning? You feel like you could see a hundred miles. Well, the Santa Ana winds blow all the crud out to sea. This is the morning they take the picture for the L.A. postcard. You know, snow on the mountain, orange in the foreground, city looking clean as a whistle. Yeah, I've seen that card. They took it in 1932. City desk, Donovan. 
I finished the story on the paramedic. If you want to take a look at it, just punch up medic. How long is it? Oh, about 29, 30 books. Why is that too long? No, no. We'll just drop about five pages of advertising. What makes you think it's worth 30 books? Well, it's very interesting. Frankly, I didn't know whether to turn it in or try to sell it as a movie. Well, while you're looking for an agent, maybe you'd like to handle this. Pretending to brush fire in Moraga Canyon. Brush fire? Sounds pretty routine. Give it that new kid, Sweeney. See what he can do with it. How'd I do, Aunt Margaret? Fine, dear, but don't land into your stirrups. You've got to grip that horse firmly with your tie. That's what my instructor keeps telling me. Well, he's right. You know, I cannot tell you how much progress you've made. You know, the last time I saw you ride, you were on a little Shetland pony, not looking at all happy about it. Look at you now. Yeah, it's really fun. Much better than Little League Baseball. Of course it is. And you'll be able to enjoy riding all your life. Can you stay and watch me take a few more jumps? Well, that's why I'm here. Heels down. Keep that spine straight. Mobile operator, give me 555-4720. Five, 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 oh. Said he does, Donovan. Hi, it's Animal. Animal, I've been trying to get a hold of you for an hour. Where the heck have you been? I must have been out of the car making pictures. Well, would it break your arm to reach over and phone in your whereabouts now and then? I just did. Where are you exactly? I'm up on Mulholland near Beverly Glen. What do you got for me? As long as you're up there, there's an overturned tanker on the San Diego freeway. It's a little bit it might be worth a picture. Listen, just beyond that, I see some heavy smoke. Oh, it's just a little brush fire in Moraga Canyon. Why don't I go over and cover that instead? Probably be out by the time you got there. Forget it, I think the freeway pileup's a better picture. Okay, Mr. Donovan, you got it. Who have we got out near the airport? The baggage handlers are staging a slowdown at LAX. How can anyone tell? Lou, Art, I'd like you to meet the number one man in my life. Paul, I'd like you to meet Lou Grant, my city editor, and Art Donovan, the assistant editor. How are you? Well, it's really nice meeting both of you. I've heard a lot about you. Really? Well, well. Have you two known each other long? Oh, um, <laughs> yes, yes, we go way, way back. Well, it's nice to meet you, sir. He's my father. <laughs> what did you think? Ah, oh, your father. I think they had the idea that you'd like to get involved with older men. You don't, do you? Art's the oldest man I've ever been involved with. Oh, uh, well, he's the one. We weren't involved. I was involved. Well, Mr. Newman. Uh, please, Paul. Uh, Paul Newman. Haven't I heard that name somewhere before? Well, there's a, there's a minister in Rapid City by that name. I guess he's the one. What brings you to town? Well, Billy may have told you, I, uh, I teach art history at the University of South Dakota, and there was an opening on the staff at UCLA, so I just came down to talk about it. I thought I'd bring Dad in to show him around, let him see how we do things here. I thought maybe he'd enjoy having lunch at McKenna's. Well, that would be a treat. Just don't need anything. <laughs> well, it'll be nice to see my little girl at work. Come on, Dad, I'll show you my desk. Oh, desk. Fun. Who's that Billy's with? Paul Newman. They've had a thing going for a long time. But not the Paul Newman. No, not the minister in Rapid City. He's the other one. Look, can I see you a minute? Close door. Ah, uh, you probably noticed, uh, that I seem a little distracted lately. No more than usual. <laughs> well, I am. What's the matter? 
Byron and I separating. We've uh, we've had some problems, and we both thought that it um, it might be best for us to go our own ways. Oh, Charlie, kind of don't don't say that's terrible. It's a shame. Well, it is terrible. I tried that separation stuff right into my divorce. Charlie, if you think you can work it out without separating, please give it a shot. Yeah, we, we've been trying, see, but, uh, well, uh, we've both been under a lot of pressures these last few years. And now, with both kids gone, I wonder if we should try to stay together if there isn't a whole lot of happiness. What happened? Whatever happens, I don't know. We've just been moving apart. She complains that I work too hard, too long. Now she wants to be independent, get a job. Yeah, well. Yeah, well, I don't want to come home to an empty house and find that my wife is off on a meeting somewhere in San Francisco or Portland or God knows where. What, the, what kind of a job is it? That's another thing that kills me. It isn't even a good job. She's selling. That's all I want. Gizmos, they call executive gifts. Clock radios, barometers, gold-plated butters, expensive junk. It's a big business these days. You know, I wouldn't mind her working if it was for something worthwhile. Yeah, but if she's happy doing it, Charlie. Now, look, I, ju I just wanted you to know. You're my best friend. You're the first person I've told besides the kids. We're going to sell a house. She's going to take a little apartment in Brentwood. I can always hang a hammock in here. Anyway, I figured that uh, people here about it start talking around the office, and you could give them the straight scoop, so. Charlie, I'm really sorry. Hey, I, didn't, I didn't tell you this to get sympathy. You've been through it. You know what it's like. You survived. Yeah. But I am sorry. Sweeney, this is a fairly straightforward story, and you messed it up. How's that? Well, you misspelled Moraga Canyon, and I just talked to the police beat a few minutes ago, and they said that the fire is 10 acres. You've got it down as 100. I'm sorry about the misspelling, Art, but I just called the fire dispatcher, and it is 100 acres and moving fast. I certainly don't have to tell you how to take care of that boss. Looks to me like you know more about it than I do. Those sirens are making him nervous. Well, sounds like a lot of fire engines. Can you see anything? Oh, they always send out more equipment than they need. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Canyon Fire is now 200 acres and out of control. I'm trying to visualize 200 acres. How big is that? Picture a flaming golf course. Oh, hello, Esther? Oh, Stella. I'm sorry. This is Margaret Pinchon. No, no, Stella, don't connect me to my office. I want to speak to somebody at the city desk. Hold on. Don't the operators know to put the fire call through to Sweeney? City desk, Donovan. Is this on the fire? Yes, it is. Hold on. Sweeney, pick up four. Sweeney, yeah, what is it? Uh, well, I'm at the Cabrillo uh, stables, and there seems to be a brush fire that oh, should be, I'd estimate, about a mile and a half. Are, are you dictating this, or are these notes? Well, I'm trying to give you a picture of what I can see. In other words, notes. Okay, give me what you got. 
Uh, well, I am at the Cabrillo Stables, uh, which is about a mile and a half north of Sunset Boulevard into Cabrillo Canyon. There is a brush fire. We have been ordered to evacuate. And uh, at this moment, the horses are being rounded up by uh, some of the teenagers and by stable hands. Okay, I got that. What else? And can you kind of snap it up? I don't have a lot of time. Uh, well, it, it seems the fire's moving in this direction, and it's really frightening. Hold it. Are you sure you're in Cabrillo Canyon? The only report we have is a fire in Moraga. I am quite sure I know where I am. Okay, okay. Don't leave where you are. Call me back in five minutes. Got that? Um, uh, I've, I've got that. Right, babe. Come on, Aunt Margaret. This is, we've got to get out of here. You go ahead, dear. I'll be right along. I've been told to stay. The beat says it's two fires instead of just one. There's a 300 acres in Moraga and the 200 in Cabrillo Canyon, and they're burning toward each other. It's going to be a big one. It's a big one already. Too big for Sweeney to handle. Hey, Newman, where do you think you're going? I'm just going to take a little lunch. No, I'm at the other Newman. Listen, Billy, I'm going to need you on rewrite for the brush fire. It's going to be a big one. What about me? I need you at the fire. Check with Donovan. I'm sorry, Dad. Why don't you go ahead without me? Well, are you kidding? This is interesting. I'd like to see how it's done. Leon! I want you to Xerox 10 copies of page 13 of the map book. I want to be able to mark the fire area as it changes. Can he know? For now. Look, Sweet, I'm going to have to take you off this. Why? It's not that I don't think you can handle it. It's just that Billy needs someone to help her take notes. No, I wish you'd give me a shot at this. I will. Next fire. Hold on just a minute, please. Really, I think I'm ready. How can I tell you this diplomatically? Let's see. You're not. Now start taking notes. Better yet, get a reverse telephone directory and a map of the area. Start calling people who live near the fire. Lou Grant. Hello, Mrs. Pinchon. Uh, listen, can I call you back? We've got a fire story breaking here. I know you've got a fire story breaking. I'm right in the middle of it. Where are you? Your rewrite man ordered me to stand by. Oh, Mr. Grant, it's so eerie here. Uh, the, the, the heavy smoke is starting to blot out the sun, and it seems to be snowing ashes. Mrs. Pinchon, I'd like to countermand those orders he gave you. With all due respect, I'd like you to hang up, get in your car, and get the hell out of there. Oh, Mr. Grant, thank you. I, I think I'd like to do that. I've been trying to get a hold of you. I want you to get over to Cabrillo Canyon. I sent Rossi over there already. You are? I thought I sent you to cover the freeway pile up. Well, I mean, after all, Donovan, what's the better story? The biggest brush fire of the season? Or some rinky-dink rear-ender on a San Diego freeway? Same to you, Art. Here you are, honey. Uh, Hold on one sec. Yeah, Dad, uh, one second. I, I know you like that health food stuff, but I couldn't find anything in the neighborhood, so I got your salad and... Uh, oh, would you mind not talking for just one minute, uh, please? Oh, no, no, not you, Bill. You go on talking. Okay. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. We have 22 engine companies, six patrols, eight camp crews. Battalions 14, 5, 6, and 31. Superintendents 3 and 8. Hold on a minute. Charlie, your wife's on line 2. She is. She's supposed to be flying to San Francisco. Maybe she's radioing from the cockpit. Uh. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on A&E. &E. Charlie, I'm uh, still in town. I didn't go. Well, uh, Mr. Harcourt called and... Uh, his boat sank in Sausalito. Apparently, somebody left the jigamacracky open on the toilet. The water. The head. The head. Well, anyway, water got in and flooded it. And his 
beautiful boat sank right to the bottom. So I wasn't in any mood for a meeting. Anyway, I'm here. So, look, if you want to come home for dinner. See you know what I mean, Marion? This is what we've come to. You tell me I can come home for dinner because your boss's boat sank. But gee, Willikers, that's wonderful. But I can't count on that happening every day. Charlie, have you heard that there's a fire out this way? Yeah, but it's west of our house and the wind is blowing the other way. Don't worry about it. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Bye. Hey, L.A., this fire is moving fast. Uh, ten more pumps and get a plan three started. Ten more to fourteen. We've got two more fires going now. It's going to take a while. Yeah, it's Joe Ross, the LA Tribune. Can I get in? to keep all cars out. That includes the press. Yeah, but I got a pass. I'm sorry. You can get in, but not your car. We've got to keep these roads clear for fire equipment. We've got a lot of people with houses in there, and we can't let them in except on foot. If you want to park it, put it on the way. Yeah, what? No valet parking? This is the last fire I'm going to purchase. Tribune. How far up do you live? Have any houses burned yet? I don't know. I've got my dogs up there. I don't care about the house. I've got to get them out. Excuse me, I'm from the Tribune. I know you're very anxious about this. Are you headed toward your house? I live about a mile and a half up the road. Uh huh. The cops wouldn't let me bring my car in. I don't even know if my house is still standing. Can I have your name and address? Yeah, Dan Letterer, 4120. Okay, have you talked to your wife? Not well, for an hour. Hey, sir! The fire department's asking people not to do that until the fire's almost on them. What are doing is lowering the water pressure that the firemen need further up. Go to hell! Holy smoke. Well, Mr. Rossi, I was beginning to wonder when the Tribune would show up. What are you doing here? I was up at the riding stable. I had to leave my car up there. If you're on your way up, perhaps you could drop it out for me. Sure, I can use a car. Good. Keys are in it. I think. Wait a minute. I remember taking them out, putting them in my handbag. Yes, here they are. It's the square key, not the round one. You have to jiggle the steering wheel to unlock the ignition. Great, gotcha. Don't take any chances. It's only a car. Engine patrol 75, battalion 14. What started the fire? Too early to tell. You know where it started? Oh, well, we've learned so far. It looks until it started in three different places. Doesn't sound exactly spontaneous, does it? You think it was ours? Cross our minds. Excuse me. Rosie, what are you doing here? I heard there was a fire. Oh, is there? I got some stuff. Oh, I wish the paper printed color, you know? It's scary. It sure is beautiful. Listen, I just talked to a fire captain who said they think this whole thing could have been started by a fire bug. Have you heard anything? No, but I'll, I'll keep my ears open. Good, I can use some help. And don't be afraid to ask questions. Remember, I'm the guy who taught you not to put your fingers in front of the lens. They don't stop this thing if it burn all the way to the ocean. Problem is, it's in really hilly terrain. There's so much wind and smoke, you're having trouble getting the helicopters in to drop the retardant. What does the Weather Bureau say about the chances of this wind dying down? They're not too hopeful. Well, do you have the names of the injured firemen? How serious? Well, are they being evacuated, or are they still up there? Okay, Bob. Thanks. Keep in touch. I remember a fire we had once in South Dakota. And I just can't talk right now. Well, that's okay. It's okay. I'm a teacher. I'm, I'm used to talking without people listening to me. I got it. Rossi just called in. He's up on a ridge right about. 
pier. He looked east and he said he saw a new fire. Guesses it's about two miles. Where would that put it? He put it about here. I think I better call Marion. That's where I live. We'll continue in a moment here on A and &E. up out of Moraga Canyon in the Santa Monica Mountains shortly after 8 a.m. this morning. Now covers an estimated 10,000. Good God. Meters. Look at how close the fire is to all those buildings. Hey. No what is happening? Southern California burning down? Looks like it. I've been calling Marion for the last 10 minutes. All I got is a busy signal. She asked the operator to cut in. I did. She says it's out of order. It scares me a little. Maybe the lines are down. Or... I got to get home. I wish I had a bigger car to put things in. I'll call the dispatcher and get your station. I don't have time. They'll make me fill out six forms and triple I'll see you guys later. Good luck, Charlie. This baby from burning all the way to the ocean. End quote. In a related development at City Hall, the mayor announced that he has asked the governor to declare a state of emergency for the entire fire area. All they need is about a thousand of those. We've just received word that the U.S. weather Kind of like spitting into a furnace, isn't it? reverse telephone directory? I reached a couple of people, but mostly I just get busy signals. Except for one old lady who didn't know there was a fire a block away from her house. I got a great quote from her. Mm -hmm. You'll never be able to use it. You get anything on that? Well, from what I understand, the fires are bad this year because of all the heavy rains we had last winter. Try that again. Well... The rains made all of the chaparral and the grass grow about twice normal size during the spring. Then the summer heat dries it out. It's like tinder. The slightest little thing will set it off. Like a firebug with a torch. There's that, but this can't all be arson. Some of it's due to natural causes, you know, spontaneous combustion, lightning. Thank you. They set up two more centers for the evacuation of the burned out families. One's at Moraga Elementary School, the other's at Cabrillo Canyon Junior High. Okay, Adam, thanks. Newman? Yeah? An, a fire in Sunset Canyon. Where'd you hear that? On TV. Uh, well, we got that about a half hour ago. Yeah, I know you're only trying to help, Dad. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Most people have said that the fire department's doing a fantastic job saving lives and property. On the other hand, someone said it took 25 minutes for the units to respond. He lost his home. Can you comment on that? Well, I am very proud of the way the department has performed in the first few hours of this fire. But you can see we've been hampered by some heavy winds here. Yeah, aren't those narrow roads making it difficult to deploy or set up your equipment effectively? You betcha. Now, these canyons are very beautiful, but they're not the safest place for people to live. The chaparral is the most highly explosive natural material in the world. People will have to realize that when they keep crowding into these areas, they're asking for trouble. Has the passage of Proposition 13 affected your ability to fight this fire? Certainly it has. 
We've been forced to cut from five men crews to four, so in the early stages, we have fewer men out there on the line. Now, we have lost houses we could have saved if we'd been at full strength from the start. Frank, did they give you a lift, Charlie? Oh, boy, and how I'm about to have a heart attack. How did you get through the road, boy? I haven't been out. I've just been shuttling people back and forth to their houses. That's great, thanks. How's your house, Frank? Burned down about an hour ago. Excuse me, sir. I'm Dennis Price of the Tribune. Did you lose your house? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, you didn't see a, a red-headed woman about five feet uh, wearing a blue sweater? Your wife? No, but I've lived with her about 30 years. Um, well, I didn't see her, sorry. But a house doesn't matter. A house is just a house. I've lived all over the world. Possessions don't mean that much to me. Uh, except I lost my collection. What kind of collection? Sir? Well, I'm a photographer. I lost my negatives. I was on my way back to get them, back to the house, and they wouldn't let me through. All your pictures. Oh, wow. I had a shot of the Himalayas. Shot at sunrise at 20,000 feet. The, the clarity was incredible. I'd never seen such light before. I had pictures of the Spanish Civil War. <laughs> Snaps of... Greta Garbo clowning. How can you replace things like that? You haven't seen a red-headed woman, have you? No. Well, if you do, uh, tell her Bergman's looking for her. people up and down the canyon to their homes and then a fireman stopped me he told me to leave so i, I just came back to grab what i could yeah that's what i've been doing i saw frank taylor he lost his house oh i know so did the Steinmans. i can't believe this is happening why are you taking your golf clubs i don't know just <laughs> grab them you don't even play golf anymore well i've been thinking of taking it up again i don't know what do you take when you've only got a few minutes the snapshots That is the one thing you can't replace. I thought you were going to put those in albums. I remember last year you said this weekend I'm going to get all the pictures organized. I'm going to, Charlie. First chance I get.
you drive this stuff out, I'm staying. What are you talking about, Charlie? They're telling us to get out. I keep hearing about people who saved their houses when they stayed. If we leave, there's no chance. Go ahead. Continue in a moment here on A and E. Charlie's Canyon? I think it is. At least that's what the guy on the TV said. They've lost 18 homes there. Nobody's heard from him yet, right? No, but they've evacuated the canyon, so I assume he's okay. Here's the latest map on the fire area. Be easier to show the areas that aren't burning. Billy, we're coming up on deadline. If you've written everything else, you can write your lead now. I just did. I'll look at it. The dry canyons of Southern California burst into flame Tuesday as rising Santa Ana winds hurled seven major fires across more than 6,000 acres of brushland, destroying 25 homes in the first hour and straining firefighting resources to their limits. Okay. Yeah. Lou. I just heard from my wife. They told her to evacuate. An hour ago, they said there was no danger. Suddenly, the wind shifted. Go! Get out of here! Do you believe this? It just seems so crazy! It's the safest place for it. Silver won't melt down there. No, no. What happened? Man, I just lost my water pressure. Try turning the spigot down there. It's on! As far as it will go! We'll bail water out of the pool. We well, have got to keep the roof wet. Charlie, you've done it. What do you think? You've got to let it go. Well, I can say that. Charlie, come on. We've got to get out of well, here. Come on, you go. Get out. Last year, I swore I was going to get one of those pumps. You get water from your swimming pool. Then the rains came and I forgot all about it. I swear, Marion, if we get through this, I am going to do it. Charlie, this is going to do it. Do it. Her mind. to go? Well, there's nothing much we can do about it, man, if he wants to stay. There's always some hard head you can't move out. I was going to buy one of those pumps. Well, hello, Mr. Bergman. Find your lady? Yeah, she just fine. She went over to stay with some friends. Uh, oh, that's good. That's a nice camera. You want to look at it? Why don't you take a few pictures? Are you sure you don't mind? Nah, keep it for a while if you want. Yeah, maybe I could go up to the canyon and snap a few shots. Sure, go ahead. I'll get this back to you. Once a photographer, right? Well, I figure I'm not too old to start over. Ansel Adams has eight or nine years on me. He's still going strong. I wouldn't be surprised if the Himalayas have one or two sunrises left. <laughs> so, Mr. Bergman? You're going to need some extra film. Oh, yeah, let me uh, pay for this. It's on me. Listen, when you're finished, I got a darkroom you could use. Hey, thank you. Uh, 
Dennis. Hey, Adam. How's it going up there? Oh, well, they've got this canyon contained. I just came down the hill on a fire truck. They pulled off the line. They're sending that over to Moraga. I gotta go back to the paper. Got a lot of film. Hey, animal, I've been meaning to tell you. I think you're being followed. Guy in the baseball cap, I know. You look like you could use something hot. Mrs. Pynchon, you're still here? Uh, they seemed a little shorthanded on help here. It's really nice of you to stick around and help them out. Well, it's the least I can do. And besides, I was stuck without my car. But now I'd like to drive my niece home. Where did you leave it? Hey, that's great, Charlie. We've been so worried. Just lost a few trees, huh? Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We managed to put out the paper without you. But you missed a terrific budget meeting. Look, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow whenever you're ready to come in. You probably have a lot to do. Right. Goodbye. They saved Charlie's house. Adam wasn't so lucky. All that's left of his is the chimney. Billy? Oh, hi, Dad. Hey, I made some reservations for us at a restaurant in Beverly Hills that I hear is terrific. Oh, that sounds wonderful. But I can't get away. The, the paper's already out. Here's your story, on the front page with your name on it. I know. W what more do you have to do? I'm putting a new top on the story as I get more details. Well, how long will you be? Oh, I won't be finished till 12 or 1. 12 or... Oh, well. Okay. Guess I'll have to cancel. Boy, that restaurant's going to be awfully disappointed when Paul Newman doesn't show up. Yeah. I'm Mike Ramirez, fire department arson group. You have a photographer by the name of Dennis Price working for you. Could you tell me where you can find him, please? Have you seen Animal? Yeah, I just talked to him about five minutes ago. He's down in the lab. You guys have got to be kidding. Listen, he's a lot of things, but he's not a fire bug. You were very early on the scene of what turned out to be the Moraga Canyon fire. Two weeks ago in the Hollywood Hills fire, you were there minutes after it started. You turned on the alarm for the San Gabriel fire. Well, yeah, I guess so, but... And you keep traffic flares in the trunk of your car. The kind that we know started the Moraga Canyon fire. I keep traffic flares in my car because I'm always covering accidents. A lot of photographers do that. We've had a man on you for 60 days now. <laughs> yeah, I know. You do? Sure. Man, in my shadow. I didn't know what you guys were doing. At first I thought he was a narc. Then I figured it had to be an arson guy because whenever I was shooting a fire there, he was. I took a bunch of pictures of him. I was going to put them in an album and send them to him. Here. Who's he? That's the guy that was following me. No, it isn't. I'm the guy who was following you. And who's he? I don't know. I keep seeing him at fire after fire. He's Mr. First Nighter. Isn't he one of your guys? No. Um, look, could I see some more pictures of him? Sure, dozens. Jeez, that's spooky. You, you think he could be the guy? Whoever thought I'd find treasure at the bottom of the pool? I've got to go get the rest. Charlie? Out of all the dresses in my closet, why did you pick this one to throw in here? I haven't worn this in years. I always thought you looked great in that dress, Mary. You did? Sure. Well, wish you'd told me. I thought you knew. No, I didn't. Wish you had. Well, it's never too late. You look great in that dress, Mary. Hey, I'm oh, dripping God. wet. <laughs> Oh, my. Oh, Charlie. When I saw you climbing that ladder with that watering can. Damn it, I was not going to lose this house. There are too many wonderful things happened here. It just means too much. 
we were ready to sell it. Well, maybe I hadn't sunk yet. The moment of truth, when it was about to burn, I wasn't going to let it go without a fight. <laughs> oh, Charlie. Uh, we haven't done this for a while, have we? Feels, feels kind of nice. You know, I was just thinking, with the fire and everything, we're going to have a tough time getting anybody to buy this house. Good. <laughs> In a biography special edition, politics was the only battle the general wouldn't fight. Exclusively tonight, the life of Colin Powell. Tonight at 8 Eastern, 9 Pacific on A&E. And now racial tension comes between the cops and the community on Police Story, next on A&E.